Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I'm really excited to bring you one of my favorite all-time baby blankets. This is called the Baby Feet Baby Blanket and as you can see the main feature are little crocheted baby feet down the center of the blanket and it's framed with arrow stitches, basket weave, and low front ridge and trimmed with eyelet crochet. Now this is an intermediate level project, but I don't want that to intimidate anybody. In the instructional tutorial you're about to watch, I take you step by step through each line and uh, in explaining how to do these front post and back post double crochets to, and popcorn stitches to form these baby feet. And in the process, I also teach you how to hide the loose strands as you go when working with two different colors of thread. I do have an additional stitch video available on my channel should you also need extra instruction in this area. But I think there should be plenty of instruction and detail in showing you how to work this. Let me go ahead and show you a little bit close. That is the back side and here is the front side. So I think this is something that the baby is going to absolutely love. And let me go ahead and show you a copy of the book. This is in my book, Contemporary Celtic Crochet, and this is available on Amazon and any um, book, online book outlets. Well, let me go ahead and show you what else you're going to need. I'm going to be using Baby Bee Sweet Delight Pump. This is yarn available from Hobby Lobby in the US and this is called Sunkiss and this is a number three weight yarn as you can see here. Each of these has approximately 340 yards. I'll put across the bottom of the screen right there how many yards you will need so that you can feel free to substitute other yarn and I'm going to need one or actually two of these which is Sweet Delight Pomp Angel in white. Of course you can use any color that you'd like. You will need three crochet hooks size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeters which will be your gauge hook. You will need one hook size smaller and for me this is going to be the size G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook and you will need an additional hook which is size E or 4 or 3.50 millimeters. And as always, I'm recommending that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. Well, let's go ahead and begin. So to begin, I'm going to be using the main color and I'm going to be using the H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook, which is going to be our gauge hook. I'm going to start by making a slip knot And then I'm going to chain a starting chain of 135 chains. For row one, we are going to begin working single crochets starting in the second chain from the hook. And we work a single crochet in that first stitch and in each stitch or each chain rather across. So when we finish this row, you should have a row of 134 single crochets. After completing row one, we're going to turn, chain one, and for row two, we're just going to work a row of single crochets all the way across. The stitch count will remain the same, so go ahead and work single crochets in each stitch across. So now for rows three and four, we are going to work a stitch called the low front ridge, which will add a small bit of texture to the surface. So this will be with the front side facing. So the odd number rows will be the front side. We're going to chain one. We're going to skip the first stitch. And this is not going to disrupt the stitch count because the next row is going to maintain the stitch count. 
So working only in the front loops, and we are going to work slip stitches in each of the rest of these stitches. Again, just front loop only, slip stitch, just like this all the way across. Make sure that you don't do this too tightly because that will pull on the fabric. So if you tend to work slip stitches very tightly, you could even bump up to the next size hook. But if you don't need to, I would just try to do it with the gauge hook. So just like that. So go ahead and work that all the way across. After working slip stitches in the front loop all the way across, we're going to chain one and turn. And now we are going to be working row number four, which is also the second row of the low front ridge. And we are going to work single crochets in that remaining stitch all the way across the row. And this should um, bring the stitch count right back to where we started at 134 stitches in a row. So once we work that single crochet, let me show you the front side, and that will bring this raised texture, just like that. So go ahead and work those single crochets. Now let's go ahead and turn and see what we have after four rows. You can see that nice texture there of the low front ridge. Now for rows five and six, we're going to start by chaining two and we're going to work the arrow stitch and we start this with a double crochet in the very first stitch of the row. Now we'll go ahead and begin the arrow by skipping the next three stitches. One, two, three. We're going to work a front post treble crochet in that next stitch. Now working behind the treble we're going to work double crochets in each of the stitches we skipped. So we come into the first stitch, work a double crochet, and the next stitch, and the next. Okay, let me work that again for you. We're going to double wrap for that treble, skip three stitches, one, two, three. We're going to treble in the next stitch, working behind that treble, we're going to double crochet in each of those three skipped stitches. And do make sure that you're only skipping three and then that you double crochet in three stitches. It's easy to mistakenly skip too many stitches for this. Okay, so we're going to work that all the way across. At the end of row five, we work a double crochet in that last stitch of the row. Now we're going to turn for row number six, which is row two of the arrow stitch, chain two, double crochet in that very first stitch. And then now working again in the top loops, we're going to skip the next three stitches, which are double crochets, work a treble in the top of that treble crochet and now working in front of the treble crochet we're going to double crochet in the three stitches that we just skipped. And let's go ahead and do that one more time for you. We're going to skip the next three stitches, treble crochet in the next stitch which was the top of the treble crochet and then working in front of the treble crochet we're going to double crochet in each of the three stitches that we just skipped. And this is going to be the repeat all the way across the row and this is with the back side facing and let's take a look at the front side. And you can see this beautiful arrow that is formed. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. At the end of row six, we're going to work a double crochet in that last stitch. We do not work in the turning chain. All right, so let's take a look 
at this lovely arrow stitch that we have. The next two rows, rows seven and eight, are going to be the same. We're going to work a chain one and simply single crochet in each stitch all the way across the row. So go ahead and work two rows of single crochet. This is what you should have after completing eight rows. Now for rows nine and 10, we are going to repeat rows three and four again. These would be the low front ridge rows. So I'll go ahead and start you on this. So we're gonna again, skip that first stitch, but working only in the front loops, we work slip stitches all the way across the row. And then at the end of the row, we're going to turn chain one, and then we're going to work single crochets in the remaining loop, just like we did on the rows right down here, rows three and four. So go ahead and work rows nine and 10. So this is what you should have after completing 10 rows. Now for row 11, we're going to begin the basket weave stitch with a chain two. We're gonna work a half double crochet worked into the top loops of that first stitch. Now we're going to work front post double crochets. I'll do the first few slowly, just in case you haven't seen this before. We're gonna wrap our hook just like we would for a double crochet, but instead of working in through the top loops, instead, we are going to give this stitch a belt. We're gonna work our hook around the body of the stitch like this. Let me do that again. We're gonna go in the front door and out the side of the stitch, and then we pull up a loop and then complete the double crochet as you normally would. We're gonna do that for three stitches, so that was one. Here's the next stitch, and then just complete that stitch. And again, in the front door, out the side. So now we have three front post double crochets. Now we're gonna work three back post double crochets, and we prepare the hook again for a double crochet. And this time we're gonna come in the back door, come in the back of the stitch, and notice the hook goes around the body of the stitch, and then out the back door again on the other side. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. It's a little trickier doing it around the single crochets, but as you can see, very it's very possible. Okay, so now we come in the back door of the next, go out that side back door, I guess you could call it. That's two, and then one more time. And three, so we have three front posts now and three back posts, and what we're going to do is alternate this all the way across. So three front post double crochets, and then three back post double crochets. One, two, and three just like that. So go ahead and work that all the way across and I will show you how the row ends. At the end of row 11, we're going to work a half double crochet in that last stitch and that is work through the top loops. Okay, so now the next two rows, this will be rows 12 and 13, are gonna be worked the same way. We're gonna chain two work a half double crochet in the top of that first stitch. And then now we work three front post double crochets. And I think you'll find that this, these next two rows are a little bit easier in working these post stitches. And then we follow that with three back post double crochets. One, two, and three. So go ahead and work two more rows in the same manner. And when you get to the end of each of these rows, just like we did, 
with row number 11, just work a half double crochet worked into the top loops of that last stitch. Do not work in the turning chain. Now for rows 14 through 16, we're going to reverse the way this basket weave looks. We're going to chain two, and for these three rows, if you see front post, we're going to work back post. So we're going to start these next three rows with three back post, double crochets, and then we're going to follow it with three front post, double crochets. Of course, when we start rows 15 and 16, we are going to go with what we see. So again, we start these next three rows with back post and then front post. And let's do this one more time. So you'll see how it is giving it the weave effect by reversing it in this direction. So you can see just how easy it is to work the basket weave. And then of course the rows will be ended in the same way by working a half double crochet in the last stitch of the row. Okay, so now when you're working this, the next two rows, what I was trying to explain is you're going to work front post over the front post in the following rows and then back post over the back post. So you're just going to grow these to look like these. Okay, so go ahead and finish rows 14 through 16. This is what you should have after completing 16 rows. Now for rows 17 through 31, we are going to repeat rows 11 through 16 two more times and then repeat rows 11 through 13 once more. So when we complete this, you're going to have a total of seven sets of the basket weave, as in one, two, and then five more alternating back and forth. So if you need stitch support for going back to row 11, go ahead and look across the screen and I will have a time mark down there so that you can just go back to that time mark and repeat again rows 11 through 16. Repeat that two times and then 11 through 13 once more after that. After completing 31 rows, this is what you should have. And as I said before, you should have seven of these sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, with the basket weave. Now for row 32, we are just going to go ahead and chain one and turn. And we are going to work single crochets in each stitch all the way across. So after completing that row of single crochet, you are going to again repeat from rows three, which starts with the low front ridge, through rows 10. Okay, so rows three and four are the low front ridge. Five and six would be the air row rows. Seven and eight are two rows of single crochet. Nine and ten is another repeat of the low front ridge rows one and two. Okay, so again, for after we complete that single crochet row, we repeat rows three through ten once again. And so you're going to have all of this on the other end up here. So go ahead and work those rows. If you need to go back to row two, I'll go ahead and put another time mark at the bottom of the screen and I will try to remember to list them also in the video description below so that if you need to go to a specific stitch, you can just click on the number, the time mark, and it should take you to that point in the video. This is what you should have after completing the first panel. And notice how the arrow stitches, the low front ridge, etc., are the same as what we've worked in the first several rows. Okay, so now we are going to 
turn and we should have the front side facing. Okay, now before we begin the center panel, there's something very important we need to do. We need to switch from our H crochet hook to one size smaller, which is the G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. If you don't switch to the smaller hook, this section is going to be kind of larger and kind of puffy, and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to chain two, and the first two rows of the center panel, we are simply going to work half double crochets in each stitch across. So the stitch count, again, remains the same. So go ahead and work two rows of the half double crochets. Now I'm going to introduce the color for the baby feet. For this blanket, I'm going to be using this, this lovely white color. Um, but do feel free to, you know, to pick a shade that will match the skin tone that you prefer. And it's really nice that there are so many different um, shades out there available on the market. So, so definitely customize your baby blanket to your own uh, preferences here. Okay, so now for row three. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is chain two for the beginning of the row. And then we are going to work half double crochets in the first seven stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, okay, five, six, and now for the seventh stitch, before I complete this, I'm going to bring in the contrasting color for the baby feet, just like this, okay? And so now we are going to work five front post double crochets. Now as we work around you can bring the yarn behind the yarn, behind the, the stitch right here, and as the hook goes around, just make sure that the yellow yarn is in front of the hook. Let me do this again. Okay, so as I wrap the hook around, make sure that the yarn goes in front of the hook just like this so that it can be worked in to the stitching. Now, it may be a little tricky as you bring this around, but I think this is going to be the best way to do this. And then the next stitch, again, make sure that yellow yarn is in front of the hook as you work. Okay, let me do that again. So as you're working the hook around, make sure that the yellow yarn gets put in front of the hook so that you can carry this. Okay, so that's two. And again, put that yarn in front of that hook as the hook works its way around the post. That's three. And again, put the yarn in front as you go around. Okay, again, picking up the white yarn or the contrasting color. And we've got one more to do. Now for this fifth stitch, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Let's go ahead and make sure that yellow yarn goes in front. There we go. So it works into the back. And then we're going to pull up until we have three stitches. Now we're not going to finish with the white stitch. We're going to go back to that yellow to complete this stitch. So we're changing back to our yellow yarn and we are going to work stitches in the next six stitches. Now be careful you don't double dip and and work this. I'll go ahead and move that. I don't want you to work an additional stitch or add any stitches here. So we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to work one half double crochet in each of the next six stitches. But before we do that, we're going to carry the white on top. So just like this. So you're going to crochet over the white strand as we go. I know this is a lot to keep up with, but this will make it nice in the end. Okay, so that's two. And three. four, five, and six. 
Now, depending on the yarn that you choose, it may or may not hide well. Now, if you have a darker um, color, uh, it, it may bleed through just a little bit, but I really don't think it's going to be a deal breaker. I think that it's still a good way to do it. Um, you can, you know, try to, to make sure that it's on the back side of those stitches as you go. But as you can see, you, you really cannot see that white um, bleeding through. Okay, so on that sixth stitch, let's back this one out because I should have changed color. So I'm going to begin that stitch. This is the sixth half double crochet, and we're going to complete it again with the white. Okay, so we're going to make five more front post double crochets over the next five stitches. So again, this stitch has been used already, so we're going to begin with this stitch and make sure that that yellow goes in front of the hook. And we make one. Again, put that yellow in, in front of the hook at just, whoops, just as the hook is being worked around the body of the stitch. I'm being very slow and meticulous because I want to make sure you can understand what I'm doing. So again, the yellow goes in front of the hook just as it goes around the stitch. We're not working it. Uh, we're not crocheting it. We're just making sure in front of the hook just so that it's hidden behind those stitches. And now the last stitch is where we're going to switch back. Okay, so we make sure it goes in front of that hook. Okay, so it's just right behind there. Now we pull up three and it's time for us to switch back to the yellow. Pull that yellow. Come on, where are you? There you are. And pull that through. So this is the foundation. Five stitches and then six in between and then five more stitches in the white. That's the foundation for the first set of baby feet. Now in between the baby feet, we're going to work 10 half double crochets. So starting in the next stitch, and again, if you want to carry the yarn, you can carry the yarn across those 10 stitches, which would be fine to do. Now let's say you don't want to do that and you want to just work this in. Um, you can just you know, cut the yarn at this point and then weave it in. Of course, you're going to end up with a lot of strands to weave in. So that's why I'm encouraging you to just minimize that and minimize, you know, uh, the possibility of uh, these strings coming undone. So now we're going to work 10 half double crochets and I'm working with the white or the contrasting color yarn on top. And you can even try to um, hide it more, you know, in the back if 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 you want to just kind of pull it down further and, and try to hide the color. Well, let's go ahead and make this a half double, not a single crochet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do these 10 stitches. Now that I have done nine, and then I'm on my 10th stitch, I need to switch back to the contrasting color yarn for the next set of baby feet and we are going to repeat what we did here starting here with the five front post double crochets six half doubles and then five front post double crochets again being careful to work that yellow yarn into your work and then ten half double crochets so we're going to do that all the way across I will start you one more time on just a couple of these just as a reminder. So we're going to put that yellow yarn in front of the hook as we work the hook around that base. I know it's tedious, but you'll thank me in the end. This will save so many hiding of strands. Okay, so in front of the hook, just as we work it around. Okay, so go ahead and work this all the way across the row. So after working that last set of the foundation for the baby feet, I've gone ahead and switched back to my yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and carry this white along. 
and we're going to half double crochet in the last seven stitches of the row and that should finish out the row. If for some reason you have an extra stitch, you may want to go back and check to see if you've double dipped into some of those, you know, other stitches or maybe if you would accidentally skipped some. Okay, so there should be seven stitches at the end of the row, just like that. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we have one, it's one set, two sets, three, four, and five sets of baby feet begun. One other thing I should point out is after working this first row, you should have had the strands continually on the back side of your work at all times. Okay, so now we are going to turn to work row number four, and we are going to have the strands in front of us at all times as we work across this row. So let's go ahead and begin with a chain two, one, two, and the first thing we're going to do is work half double crochets in the first six stitches. And since I'm choosing to carry my yarn, I'm just going to carry it in the back, which is really the front as I work since this is the back. So half double crochet in the first six stitches. Now before I complete the sixth stitch, I'm going to bring the yellow down and pick up the white to complete that stitch. Okay, now we're going to work back post, double crochets, and I'm going to start right there. And notice that I am working over this yellow strand, keeping it towards the back, working that back post, double crochet. Let's make sure, yeah, that's good. And we're going to work across the other stitches as well. Again, keeping this strand, the yellow strand in the back. Make sure you don't pull that up accidentally. And we are going to be working over seven stitches. Okay, so that's two. Here's the third. Make sure that yellow goes in front. Then make sure it doesn't come through the other side. You can just give a little tug. Again, putting that strand in front of the hook as we work those back post double crochets. I know this is tedious, but it's for a good purpose and I think it's going to look so much more beautiful than if you had to hide a bunch of these strands. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we need to do one more. Now here's the seventh stitch, which can be a little bit tricky. Let's put that yarn in front. Whoops. There we go. Pull that, pull that through carefully. There we go. That was a little bit tricky. Now, before we wrap this, we're going to have to drop our yarn, pick up the yellow, just like that. So now we have seven back post double crochets. After we do that, we are going to half double crochet with the yellow. Make sure you go over the white as well. In the next four stitches, one, two, three, and four. But before we do that, let's go ahead and switch up our yarn to the white as we complete that fourth half double crochet. And yes, your yarn may get a little bit twisted, so I would highly recommend that you kind of untwist or, or untangle them at the beginning of each row as you begin. I wish there was a, a magic uh, button to push to make sure that doesn't happen, but there really isn't. So, all right, so now we're gonna work seven of these. Again, putting that yellow yarn in front as we work. And let me let me just show you. See, this does not show through at all as you carry the yarn and you can see that it is carried beautifully behind the work. I really hope this will help you with other projects too, where you may have wondered, what in the world do I do with all these yarn strands? Well, this is one solution. Okay, 
So that's two back post double crochets. Put that yarn in front. Again, be very careful. This is not the time to rush. That's three. Yarn in front. Four. I'm going to give this a little tug so it's not you know, showing. Put the yarn in front. And that's five. And make sure you're doing back post double crochets and don't accidentally default to half doubles. The reason I mentioned that is I've actually done that already in the recording process. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. Um, I do make mistakes and hopefully they don't make it into the recordings too often. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the last one, which is going to be here. Let's go ahead and get all of that stitch. There we go. And Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're ready to go to the next color, and I did not, didn't mean to do that, so let's back that out and begin with the yellow again. So we've done our first set of baby feet with the back side facing. Now as we go forward working in between the set of baby feet, we are going to work eight half double crochets it's important that we try to keep these numbers straight, so try to be careful on that. I do highly recommend if you can get the written pattern, it would be very helpful for this particular section, just so that you keep the numbers straight. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and I am working over the white, as you can see, with a contrasting color. That's five, six, seven and one more and make sure we switch our yarn out on that last one that's in between okay so now we're going to do it again i'll just start you again and then i'll give an assignment here so we're going to make sure we wrap the yarn in front as that hook goes around that body it's getting a little trickier because there are a lot of strands here Okay, so that's one. Let's give that a little tug. See how you can pull that down to keep it nice and taut. And the next one, we'll put it in front as we go around the body of that stitch. And again. Okay, so go ahead and complete that across the row. Again, you're going to be working seven back post double crochets, and then four half doubles, seven more back post double crochets, and then eight half doubles in between the sets of baby feet. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. At the end of row four, we work half double crochets in the last six stitches. And that's five and six. So now we're ready to begin row number five. We're going to chain two and we are going to carry the white or the contrasting color behind us as we work the first six half double crochets. And on that sixth stitch, remember to switch to the contrasting color like so. And we are going to work seven front post double crochets. And remember, as we go, carry that main color yarn in front of the hook when the hook wraps behind it. And you can also give that a little tug if you see it showing in the front. You can just, you know, tug on a little bit, not too much because you don't want this section to be too tight. But again, working with that, that yarn going in front of the hook as you work these post stitches and yeah, just yeah, a little bit of tug there will make it, make sure it doesn't um, stand out. So go ahead and work those seven front post double crochets. 
after switching out the yarn from that seventh stitch, then we're going to go ahead and work a half double while I carry the white yarn behind there. We're going to work four half double crochets just like the last row. So that's three. And on the fourth one, be sure again to switch out the yarn color. If you forget, don't worry, you'll be reminded as you begin the feet and you will have to pull that out just a little bit. Okay, so and then we work our hook. Again, putting that yellow yarn in front or whatever main color you're using. And we work seven front post double crochets. So go ahead and work those. And before I complete that seventh um, front post double, make sure that we swap out the yarn again for the main color. And then in between the sets of baby feet, we're going to work eight half double crochets. Again, working through the tops and working over that contrasting strand. And for the eighth stitch, we go ahead and pause to switch out to the white or the contrasting color. And we just do it all over again. So let's just take a look at that repeat. So once we begin the feet, seven front post double crochets, four half doubles, seven front post double crochets, and then eight half doubles. Go ahead and work that all the way across. And when you get to the end, you're going to also have six half double crochets at the end of this row. Now to begin row six, we have the back side facing, chain two, and with that contrasting color yarn being worked in still, we're going to half double crochet in the first six stitches. And that's our fifth stitch. Let's give that a little tug. And for the last stitch, we're going to change. Well, before we do that, let's put this yellow in front because we want to keep these in front of us with the back side facing. Okay, make sure that's nice and okay, taut. There we go. And now we are going to back post double crochet over the next six stitches, not seven, but six. So starting with that first, let's go ahead and there we go. Make sure that we include that yellow main color strand. There we go. In each of the next six back post double crochets. You can almost need an additional hand for working with these um, two colors like this. Just another reminder that take this nice and slow. Don't get into a big hurry with this because we don't want to make mistakes. Okay, that yellow looks nice and even back behind the work. Okay, let's double check to make sure we have the right number and we do. And after those six, let's go ahead and back that out because I need to switch colors back to the main color. And then now we're going to work six half double crochets. Bring that white back in front. So we're working in the white or the contrasting color space first. So one, two, three, four, five, and in another one of the white ones. And before we switch or finish that stitch, let's switch to the white. And now we work 
six more back post double crochets working that uh, main color in Four. Give this a little bit, a little bit of tug there. Don't want it super tight, but I don't want it loose either because there's a chance that that yellow could bleed through if it's too loose. Let's try that one again. The yellow was being picked up just to show you that that can happen. Let's do that one again. It's not wanting to cooperate. Okay, yellow in front as we work around that stitch. There we go. Worked that time. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and this is the one I'm going to switch colors on. So back to the yellow. And the number of stitches in between are eight. So we're going to work eight half double crochets in between the sets of baby feet. Okay, so just again, we have six back post double crochets, six half doubles, six more back post double crochets, and then we're going to work eight half double crochets in between, and that is going to be your repeat all the way across row number six. So go ahead and finish that row. And row six ends by working six half double crochets, one in each of the last six stitches. So now it's time to turn. Let's take a look at how our feet have progressed. Notice that that did go in a little bit, and that is by design. Okay, so now for row number seven, we are going to chain two, one, two. And now that we're carrying the contrasting color on the back side. Let's go ahead and move this to the back side of our work so we can work that in. We're going to half double crochet in the first six stitches. So go ahead and do that before we complete that six stitch. Go ahead and change to the contrasting color. And now we are going to work five front post double crochets, again being careful to work in the main color in those five stitches. And one more. And before you complete that fifth stitch, Go ahead and change to the main color. And now in between the feet, we are going to work eight half double crochets, working in the top loop and working over the contrasting color. So go ahead and work those eight stitches. Before we complete this eighth half double crochet, we are changing again to that contrasting color. And then now we're going to work five more front post double crochets over the feet section. And make sure we are working in that main color behind the work. And before we complete this fifth stitch, let's go ahead and change back to the main color. And then now working over that white thread, we're going to work eight half double crochets in between the baby feet. Now before we complete that fifth stitch, let's go ahead and bring the white behind and bring the yellow and now we can work those next stitches, the eight half double crochets in between 
the sets of baby feet. And again, working over that contrasting color yarn. Okay, so let me just review that with you one more time. We're going to work five front post double crochets, eight half double crochets, five front post double crochets, and then in between we also work eight half post, double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way across. And just to be clear, the end of row seven was worked with one half double crochet in each of those last six stitches and working on top of the contrasting color. Let's go ahead and turn. And now we are going on to row number eight of the center panel. We're going to chain two, one, two, and continuing to carry this white color or contrasting color, go ahead and work those first six stitches, which will be half double crochets. Now working those six back post double crochets, make sure we work that yellow strand in front of the hook so that it is worked in behind. There we go. And we're going to do that for six stitches. And give that a little tug. Okay, I've just finished working my fifth back post double crochet. And I'm going to work one more because we're going to work six. Okay, and we're going to be working over one of the yellow or uh, main color stitches as we expand the size of this little foot. And again, before we complete that stitch, go ahead and return to the main color. So just to be clear, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six back posts, double crochet. So you can see that foot is getting a little bit wider again. And then we're going to get to the toes in a couple of, a couple of rows, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And then so after we do that, we are going to work, we're going to work, uh, here we go, six half double crochets working over the contrasting color. So go ahead and work six of those. Now before I complete the sixth stitch, I'm going to bring the main color over here. And we're going to use the contrasting color to complete that half double crochet. And please notice that you're going to have one yellow or main color stitch before you get to the other five of the contrasting color. So we're going to go ahead and start working. Make sure we have this in the correct place. And put that yellow in front of that stitch so that it gets worked in. So we're going to work six back post double crochets just like that. And once again, as you complete that sixth back post double crochet, make sure that you switch to the new or the main color yarn. And so now we have worked two feet. And then after that, the space in between the set of feet, we are going to work eight half double crochets. So let's go ahead and work those eight half double crochets. Again, working over the contrasting color yarn. And before completing that eighth stitch, make sure we switch back to that contrasting color. So let me go ahead and review with you what you need to do for row number eight. After working those first six half double crochets along the edge, we work six back post double crochets, and then six half doubles, and then six more back post double crochets, and then in between the sets of feet, you're going to work eight half double crochets. And then at the very end 
of this row, we are going to work six back, I'm sorry, six half double crochets in the main color. So go ahead and finish row number eight. This is what the baby feet should look like after completing eight rows. This is of the center panel. Now for row number nine, we're going to chain two and we're going to half double crochet in the first six stitches. And once again, make sure that you carry the contrasting color as you do those six stitches. And on that sixth stitch, we're going to um, change to the contrasting color yarn. Okay, so now, after we do that, we're going to front post double crochet in the next seven stitches. So make sure that we are carrying that yellow yarn and we are going to do seven stitches. So go ahead and work those seven stitches, those seven front post double crochets. Now before I complete that seventh stitch, make sure I switch to the main color and um, also just notice how the foot is getting another stitch wider. Okay, so now we are going to work with the main color and we are going to work four half double crochets and then we're going to swap out to that contrasting color on that fourth stitch and then we resume seven front post double crochets again. So go ahead and work those seven front post double crochets. Again for that seventh front post double crochet make sure you change back to the main color and now we are going to work eight half double crochets in the space in between the sets of baby feet. So let's go ahead and work those. And on that eighth half double, make sure you switch back to that contrasting color. Let's go ahead and even that up. Okay, so let me go ahead and review the numbers for row number nine. Half double crochet in the first six stitches and then when you come to the feet, this is the repeat, seven front post double crochets, four half doubles, seven front post double crochets, and then eight half double crochets in between the sets of feet. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row and when you get to the end of the row, we are going to be working again six half double crochets to finish the row. So this is what you should have after completing nine rows of the center panel. Now we're going to begin row 10. Let's go ahead and chain two and we are going to half double crochet in those first six stitches working over that contrasting color thread. And let's make sure that we pick up the contrasting color as we complete the sixth stitch here. So now we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to make the first toe. This is going to be the smallest of the baby toes, um, the one furthest on the outside of the foot. And so what we're going to do as we work over this yellow strand, we're going to work four single crochets in that same space. Okay, and we're going to pull up a loop. Now normally for the popcorn you would put the hook in and then you would, you know, pull it through, etc. And that's with the front side facing. But since we're going to be working toes with either the front or the back side facing, um, obviously we have the back side of our work facing for row number 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our hook in from the back side to the front side, 
pull, put the hook over that loop and then pull through and give it a chain. Don't make this chain too tight because we are going to be working in that for the next row. So now after we do that, we are going to work back post double crochets. And we're going to do that over the next six stitches. So the next stitch is going to be here. Should we put that strand in front? So that's one and two, etc. So go ahead and work those six back post double crochets. And just like before, before we complete that sixth stitch, go ahead and bring this in front since we have the back side facing us and go back to that main color. And after we do that, we're going to work half double crochets in each of the next four stitches. Let's just make sure we work over that contrasting color. We have four of these. And one more. Again, switching back to um, to the contrasting color. And now we're going to do the opposite of what we did. We're going to work six back post double crochets first. So let's go ahead and work those six back post double crochets. Okay, after those six back post double crochets, it's time for us to make another toe, which is a popcorn. So we're going to work four single crochets and make sure you're working over the main color. Pull up a loop and we're going to come in from the back to the front to pull that loop through. Now before you make this final chain. I have made this mistake three times already. Go ahead and change to the contrasting color yarn so we can go forward with our half double crochets in between the feet. So we're going to have eight of those. So let's go ahead and do eight of those half double crochets. And again, making sure that you work over the contrasting yarn. I am repeating myself a lot. I realize that. Um, partly because I've needed the reminders, so I'm hoping that that will benefit you in all of these color changing reminders. Uh, it's so easy to just um, ignore it or just forget about it completely. Okay, and the eighth stitch, which is right here, go ahead and make another color change. Well, let's go ahead. Before we do that, let me back this out just a little bit. Let's go ahead and put the yellow on this side. I just prefer doing it that way. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we have. I'll just review this repeat with you one more time. We have six main color half double crochets at the beginning, and then we work that popcorn toe right here, and then six back post double crochets, four half doubles, six back post double crochets, add another popcorn toe, and then eight half double crochets. And let's take a look at the front side and you can see how this is forming. Okay, so go ahead and work this all the way across the row. And at the end of this row, you're going to have, once again, six half double crochets and go ahead and finish that and then we'll start the next row. This is what you should have after working 10 rows of the center panel. And you can see the little toes here and here and they should be popping towards you with the front side facing. Okay, now we're going to start row 11 with a chain two. And now we're going to work seven half double crochets and again make sure you're working over that contrasting color as you go. So go ahead and work seven half double crochets. And 
this is the six. And number seven is going to be right in that chain, which is in the top of that popcorn that we worked for the toe. Just wanted to make sure you see that. And let's go ahead and I'm going to back that stitch out because it's now time for me to switch to the contrasting color. Now we're going to work another popcorn in this next space and make sure you're working over the main color as you do this. We're going to work four single crochets worked in the same stitch, pull up a loop, and since we are working with the front side facing, we're going to go in through the front of the loop, not coming from the back, and put that loop on the hook. There we go and pull it through and give it a chain. And we have a second toe. Now we're going to work five back, I'm sorry, five front post. Make sure that you grab the yarn in the back is what I was thinking of saying. So go ahead and we're gonna work five of these. And I can always give that a little tug. There we go. See how it comes through the front a little bit? If you just give it a gentle tug and that brings that strand back in line again. Okay, so after we do this fifth stitch, go ahead and complete it with the main color. Okay, now after we do that, we are going to half double crochet in the next four stitches. Again, working over that contrasting color. And one more. And on that fourth stitch, return to the contrasting color from the main color. Okay, so now we're going to work five front post double crochets. Let's try that one again. Sometimes working with this yarn, um, there's a little really pretty shiny th thread running through the yarn and, and it easily gets caught up with the hook occasionally. So I just pull those out and then try again. Okay, so I have three and four, let's pull that off of the yarn, and our fifth stitch, just like that. Now we're ready to make a toe on this stitch right here, and we're gonna do that by making four single crochets, one, two, three, four in the same space, pull up a loop, insert hook again from the front to the back since the front side is facing, gather that loop and then give it a chain. Now before we give that a chain, we're going to switch back to the main color and now we're ready to work a half double right in the top of that toe, just like that. After completing that half double crochet, that is the first of 10 that we are going to work in a row. So that's two, and I'll go ahead and work across this section until I get to the 10th half double crochet. After bringing in the main color, we're gonna go ahead and work a half double in the top of this toe that we worked in the last row and do make sure that you're working over the contrasting color yarn. I had actually just forgotten to do that. And then after we do that, we're going to work until we have a total of 10 half double crochets, this being the first one. So go ahead and work those across this section and for the 10th, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up part of that stitch and then switch back 
to the contrasting color. And so to begin row 11, we have seven half double crochets, and that seventh is worked in the top of that popcorn stitch from the previous row. Then we have another popcorn, uh, forming it by putting the hook in from the front to the back, and then five front post double crochets, four half doubles, five front post double crochets, the popcorn, and then we switch to the half doubles. We work that first of the 10 half doubles in the top of the toe or the popcorn stitch. So we have from here to here, we have a total of 10, and the 10th is also worked in the top of the toe. And at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and start another popcorn in the next stitch. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. This is what you should have after completing 11 rows. I would encourage you to look across the entire row and make sure that you have two toes begun on each set of feet. Um, I think it would be time well spent, especially if you find that you may have mistakenly left one of those off. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to turn with the back side facing again. So now to begin row number 12, we are going to chain two, one, two, and then we are going to work eight half double crochets, being careful to work over that contrasting yarn. Okay, so go ahead and work eight half double crochets, and the last one will be worked on top of that popcorn right there. I'm going to go ahead and just work these with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the eighth one will be right here. And we're going to bring our yarn over in front of us since we have the back side facing. And we work just like this. Now we are going to work another popcorn in the next stitch. Just like this. Make sure now that you work it into the top of the stitch and not accidentally into this little space left from the popcorn of the last row. So we're going to go ahead and work four single crochets in the same place. And just as a Gentle reminder, since we have the back side facing, we're going to bring our hook in from the back side like this. Hook that loop, bring it through, and then give it a chain so that it pops on the opposite side, which is towards the front side of the work. After we complete the popcorn, we are going to work two back post double crochets. Make sure you work over that main color that we're not using at the moment. But we're not going to complete this stitch entirely because we're going to switch to the main color just like that. And now we're going to work half double crochets in the next eight stitches. So that'd be two of the contrasting color yarn followed by four with the main color, which are the separators between the little feet. So that is six so far. And then the next two will be over the contrasting color. And before you complete that eighth one, bring your yarn in front and switch back to the uh, contrasting color yarn. And let's go ahead and do two of the back post double crochets. And then now we're going to do another toe. Make sure we work over this yellow yarn. And we work those four single crochets. Let's pull 
tangle up some more yarn here. It's easy for this yarn to get tangled a bit. And pull up that. Oop, remember now, we're coming into the back, from the back of the stitch, hook that loop, and bring it through like that. Go ahead, before we give that a chain, let's go ahead and switch to the yellow. Okay, and so now we're going to work in the top of that first half double, and then the next. And we're going to do this until we have, let me go ahead and back that one out, until we have 12 half double crochets in between the sets of the feet. So go ahead and do those next 12 stitches. Of course, on that 12th stitch, we're going to be switching out the yarn to repeat what I've just shown you. And as I mentioned already, that 12th half double crochet is crocheted in the top of that popcorn stitch. And let's go ahead and bring the yellow to the front and pull that on through. And so let's go ahead and take a look at our repeat for this row. This is row 12. We're going to half double crochet in the first eight stitches, popcorn in the next, back post double crochet in the next two. We're going to half double crochet in the next eight, back post double crochet in the next two, popcorn in the next stitch, and then half double crochet in the next 12 stitches. So we're going to work that all the way across the row, and when you come to the end of the row, we are going to be working eight stitches, or eight half double crochets in those last stitches, starting with the top of this popcorn right here. So go ahead and finish row number 12. This is what you should have after completing the 12 rows of the center panel. Now I would also take some time and count to make sure that you have three toes on each foot Now we're going to go on to row 13. This will be the last row where we have to carry um, the extra yarn with us. Let me go ahead and get this set. Let's go ahead and put that one to the back. And to begin row number 13, we are going to chain two. After we do that, we're going to work half double crochets in the first nine stitches. So let's go ahead and do that. And don't forget to carry that contrasting strand of yarn. And for the ninth half double crochet, it will be worked in the top of that popcorn from the previous row. And don't forget to add the contrasting color as you complete that stitch. So after completing those nine half double crochets, and I've gone ahead and switched to the contrasting color yarn for the next stitch. Hang with me because these next three stitches are a little on the tricky side. Okay, so we are first of all going to work a popcorn in the next stitch, and that is with those four single crochets worked in the same space. Pull up a stitch, and again, we're Working with the front side facing, so we're going to go in through the front side and pull that closed. Now before we do that final chain, go ahead and bring in the main color because we're going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch using the main color. But before you finish that stitch, bring in the contrasting color again because we are going to now work the big toe. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a popcorn or a double crochet popcorn in the next stitch right here. Again, working over the um, main color yarn. There are a lot of things going on in this particular row. So we're going to make four double crochets. This is making that big, big toe. Just like that. Pull up a loop, and just like you would with the single crochet, put the hook in the front, pull up that loop, 
just like so. And before you give it a chain, I almost did that, go ahead and change back to the main color again. Lots and lots going on, like I said. Now we're going to work half double crochets until we get to the next toe. So how many are we gonna work? We are going to work six. So let's go ahead and work six of these. three, four, five, and six. Before you finish that sixth one, go ahead and change to the contrasting color. And now we are going to work the opposite of what we did on this side. We're going to work that big toe, which is going to be four double crochets in the next space. Pull up a loop and going into the front again, because we have the front side of the work facing. Go ahead and pull that through and then we're going to switch to the main color and you can always and give that a little tug a little bit once we finish this and working over this strand we're going to work a half double but then we're going to change colors again so that we can make the popcorn okay so let's go ahead and do that a little popcorn with the single crochets Pull it up and again into the front so that it pops properly. But before you do that, go ahead and change to the main color again. So after working um, those toes and bringing in the main color, we're going to work 14. Let's go ahead starting with this one. 14 half double crochets across. That's one two, three, etc. So go ahead and work 14 half double crochets as you work over the contrasting strand of yarn. When you work the 14th half double crochet, we're going to change back to the contrasting color and that should be worked in the top of that last toe of the previous row. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the repeat is for row 13, which is probably the most complicated so far. But the good news is after this, it gets much easier and then we're just gonna repeat a large section. Okay, so to begin row 13 again, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine half double crochets then a single crochet popcorn, a half double crochet going back to that main color, and then a double crochet popcorn. That's what the DCPC represents in the pattern. And then we have six um, half double crochets in the main color again, and then another large double crochet popcorn, and then a half double, and then a single crochet popcorn, and then we have 14 half double crochets in between the sets of feet. So we're gonna do that all the way across the row and at the end of the row, just like we did at the beginning, we are going to end by working nine half double crochets in those last stitches. And one of those stitches will be worked in the top of the third toe right there. After completing all 13 rows, of the center panel section. You should have feet that look like this all the way across. And what you may wanna do at this point is make sure that you have all the popcorn where they need to be. You should have 10 toes on each set of feet. So go ahead and do a quick visual check before going forward. Okay, before we turn to the next rows, 
let's go ahead and disconnect the white yarn. I'm going to leave a nice generous strand so that I can hide that in my work later on. Now we are back to working with just one color, yay. And the next two rows are going to be very easy. We're just going to chain two and we're going to work half double crochets in each stitch. So I'm going to work this over the first set of feet with you just so that you don't accidentally add additional stitches in. This will bring you back to a 134 stitch count that again is not including that turning chain at the beginning of the round. Okay, so far I have just worked in half double crochets. Here's another half double. Then there's going to be one where the popcorn, single crochet popcorn was worked. One more in that yellow main color half double and then one in top of the double crochet popcorn. Be sure that you do not add additional stitches alongside these popcorns. If you do, that's probably where it's going to happen. And then we just work those center stitches in between the two feet. There should be six of them here. And then again, going over the feet, one here, there's going to be one in between the two toes that is yellow and then one again for that um, single crochet popcorn. Again, do not add an additional stitch in between. If you do, your stitch count is going to be off going forward and you really don't want that to happen. Uh, it's not the end of the world if it happens, but, but anyway, you don't want to do that if you can help it. So this is what you should have. Um, so we're just going to work um, half double crochets in this row and in the row to follow. So that would be for rows 14 and 15. So go ahead and complete those two rows. And this is what you should have after completing rows 14 and 15. Now for row 16, we are going to turn, we're going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across. We're still using the um, smaller or G or six or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. But after this row, we are going to be changing back to the H um, or eight size hook. This is what you should have after completing the center panel and that row of single crochet. That would be row 16. I just wanted to also show you just how clean this looks on the back side, not having to hide any additional strands because we have them all worked in neatly to our work. So I hope that method really helped you in, uh, in saving you a lot of time and, and I think making a better product by working those um, extra strands in as we go um, by working over the colors that we were interchanging. Okay, so now we're going to do something very, very important. I mentioned just a few seconds ago, we are going to change our hooks from the G to the slightly larger H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter. Very, very important going forward. And instead of showing you what to do from this point, I'm going to give you a large assignment for the third panel we are basically going to repeat everything we did in the first panel and that will be starting at row number three where the low front ridge right here begins. So we're going to repeat um, the low front ridge, the arrow, the low front ridge, the basket weave section, and again low front ridge rows, the um, arrow rows and the extra single crochets of course and then another low front ridge rows one and two um, in the book this would be rows three through 38 so go ahead and repeat using your size h crochet hook rows three 
through 38. And after we do that, I will show you how to complete the edging. After completing row 38, go ahead and fasten off your yarn and make sure that you clip a nice, generous portion there of, of strand to be hidden in just a bit. Okay, so now we're ready to join the contrasting color. Now with the front side of the blanket facing and at the place where we just fastened off the yarn, we are going to join the new yarn with the slip stitch. Let me go ahead and get my, there we go, slip knot. And I'm going to join with the chain and give it a little bit of a tug. And now we are going to single crochet in each stitch across. So go ahead and work those single crochets all the way across until you get to the first corner. And I'll show you what to do when you get to the corner. Now once you get to the corner, we're going to chain one and we're going to work another single crochet in the same place as the last stitch so that we are forming a corner. And so at this point, what we are going to do is we are going to work single crochets evenly across the um, row ends. I do not have a specific number to give you. Um, and it's actually a good reason. And that is the most important thing now is that you crochet these stitches evenly across the end. You don't want them to be, um, you know, ripply by you know, crocheting too many of them so that they are, they form a ripple or you don't want them to be so pulled tight that, that it affects the shape of the blanket. So just crochet in a relaxed way across the row ends. You may want to have the number that you work on the one end so that when you complete the blanket on the opposite end that it is a similar number so that the blanket will be even. Okay, so um, go ahead and work these stitches across the row ends. And once you've completed doing that, and then once again, we're going to chain one, turn 90 degrees, and then we are going to work in each stitch opposite row one. And as you see, this is our foundation chain, and this row is going to completely cover that chain. And if you're not sure where to place your hook on these stitches, just look for the, the previous stitches, and you can just put your hook there in those holes. And then just go ahead and complete all the way around the entire perimeter of the blanket. And then we will join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. And then we will work the last uh, round of this project. After working this all the way around, I'm going to work a chain one. And then I'm going to join to the first single crochet of the round. Now I'm going to do something very important. We are switching from the H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter hook to a much smaller. I'm going to be using a size E or 4 or 3.50 millimeter crochet hook. And yes, I've added a little soft handle that is available in some craft stores and it does really help quite a bit. Okay, I am not going to turn. But before we do that, let me just give you a stitch count because I know some of you are going to want that. It's not necessarily part of the pattern. Um, again, it's just really important that you work these stitches evenly and so that there's no rippling and so that also so that it's not too tight. Um, so in that number, it can vary from person to person. But for the record, I worked approximately 108 on each of these sides. So now to begin the final round of the project, we're going to chain one and starting in that first stitch, we're going to single crochet, chain three, and then double crochet in the same place. This is making the eyelet um, 
lace. We're going to skip the next stitch and in the very next single crochet we're going to do that again. Single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. And we're going to do this all the way around the blanket. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. And you can see as you go about it will leave this beautiful little eyelet trim. Now when you do get to the corners of this project, let me go ahead and get to the first corner, just treat the chain one space as you would a single crochet stitch. So just treat that as another stitch as you go around and just work around the blanket evenly. And when you get to the end, I will show you the join. At the end of this round, we are just going to join with a slip stitch to the very first. You can either join to the first stitch or to that chain space. Either way, I'm going to join to that chain and go ahead and give it a chain and a tug. Let me let you get a good look at that corner. And I'm going to clip a generous strand and pull this on through so that I can hide this. And even though there are several of these for me to hide in this project, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a really quick ending tutorial on how to finish off your item. Okay, so we want to have the back side facing us. And you can see another loose strand waiting to be hidden here. Let's go ahead and bring it down into these white stitches. You want to probably stick with the color of yarn that is similar. Obviously hiding you know, the contrasting color in the main color might be a little trickier. Not impossible. But let me just run it underneath the back sides of the single crochets just like this. And that should be plenty. And pull it on through. And then also I like to pull back on it a little bit to hide more of that material under the stitches under normal tension and then cut carefully and make sure you don't clip your stitches. And as you can see, I have a few more of these to hide, but go ahead and finish this well by hiding all those loose ends on the back side and I will show you what I have. And as promised, I wanted to show you the final baby blanket. And thank you so much for hanging with me on this project. Um, if you like this project, please comment below. I would love to hear from you. And as always, God bless. Bye-bye.